The Gospel According to Matthew. Chapter 1. A record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Judah was the father of Perez and Zerah by Tamar, and Perez was the father of Hezron, and Hezron the father of Ram, and Ram the father of Aminadab, and Aminadab the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz was the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David the king. And David was the father of Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah, and Solomon was the father of Rehoboam, and Rehoboam the father of Abiyah, and Abiyah the father of Asa, and Asa the father of Jehoshaphat, and Jehoshaphat the father of Uram, and Uram the father of Uzziah, and Uzziah the father of Jotham, and Jotham the father of Ahaz, and Ahaz the father of Hezekiah, and Hezekiah the father of Manasseh, and Manasseh the father of Ammon, and Ammon the father of Josiah, and Josiah the father of Yahaniah and his brothers, at the time of the exile to Babylon. And after the exile to Babylon, Yohaniah was the father of Shealtiel, and Shealtiel the father of Zerubbabel, and Zerubbabel the father of Abahad, and Abahad the father of Eliakim, and Eliakim the father of Azur, and Azur the father of Zadok, and Zadok the father of Ahim, and Ahim the father of Elihud, and Elihud the father of Eliezer, and Eliezer the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, from whom was born Jesus, who is called the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David are fourteen generations, and from David to the exile to Babylon fourteen generations, and from the exile to Babylon to the Messiah, fourteen generations. Now the birth of Jesus Christ happened like this. His mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, and before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man, and not willing to make her a public example, intended to put her away secretly. But when he thought about these things, look, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to yourself Mary, your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this has happened, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Look, the virgin will conceive and bear a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. And Joseph arose from his sleep, and did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took his wife to himself and had no marital relations with her until she had brought forth a son, and he named him Jesus. Chapter 2. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, look, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who is born king of the Jews? For we saw his star in the east, and have come to worship him. And when king Herod heard it, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him and gathering together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he asked them where the Messiah would be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are in no way least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come forth a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod secretly called the Magi, and learned from them exactly what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I also may come and worship him. And they, having heard the king, went their way, and look, the star which they saw in the east went before them, until it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And they came into the house and saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then, opening their treasures, they offered to him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Being warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they went back to their own country another way. Now when they had departed, look, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and stay there until I tell you, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And he arose and took the young child and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked by the Magi, was exceedingly angry, and set out, 
and killed all the male children who were in Bethlehem and in all the surrounding countryside, from two years old and under, according to the exact time which he had learned from the Magi. Then that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled, saying, A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be comforted, because they are no more. But when Herod was dead, look, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother, and go into the land of Israel, for those who sought the young child's life are dead. And he arose and took the young child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in the place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. Being warned in a dream, he withdrew into the region of Galilee, and came and lived in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through the prophets, that he will be called a Nazarene. Chapter 3. And in those days John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. For this is he who was spoken of by Isaiah the prophet, saying, The voice of one who calls out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his roads straight. Now John himself wore clothing made of camel's hair and with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then people from Jerusalem, all of Judea, and all the region around the Jordan went out to him, and they were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for his baptism he said to them, You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Therefore bring forth fruit worthy of repentance, and do not think to yourselves, We have Abraham for our father, for I tell you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bring forth good fruit is cut down, and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you in water for repentance, but the one who comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will thoroughly cleanse his threshing floor. He will gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn up with unquenchable fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. But John would have hindered him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and you come to me? But Jesus, answering, said to him, Allow it for now, for this is the fitting way for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up directly from the water, and look, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove, and coming on him. And look, a voice out of the heavens said, this is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Chapter 4. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was hungry afterward. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then the devil took him into the holy city. He set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will put his angels in charge of you. And, in their hands they will lift you up, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not test the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and their glory. And he said to him, I will give you all of these things, if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan. For it is written, You are to worship the Lord your God, and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and look, angels came and served him. Now when he heard that John was delivered up, he withdrew into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and lived in Capernaum, which is by the sea, in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, toward the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who were living in darkness have seen a great light, and those who lived in the land and shadow of death, on them a light has dawned. From that time, Jesus began to proclaim, and to say, Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is near. And walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Come, follow me, 
and I will make ye fishers of people. And they immediately left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in the boat with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the boat and their father, and followed him. And Jesus went about in all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness among the people. And the report about him went out into all Syria, and they brought to him all who were sick, afflicted with various diseases and torments, possessed with demons, and epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. And large crowds from Galilee, and Decapolis, and Jerusalem, and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan followed him. Chapter 5. And seeing the crowds, he went up onto the mountain, and when he had sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you, persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely, for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its flavor, with what will it be salted? It is then good for nothing, but to be cast out and trodden under the feet of men. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do you light a lamp, and put it under a measuring basket, but on a stand, and it shines to all who are in the house. Even so, let your light shine before people, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or part of a letter will disappear from the law, until all things are accomplished. Therefore, whoever will break one of these least commandments, and teach others to do so, will be called least in the kingdom of heaven, but whoever will do and teach them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, there is no way you will enter into the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to the ancient ones, Do not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I tell you, that everyone who is angry with his brother without a cause will be liable to judgment, and whoever will say to his brother, Raka, will be in danger of the council, and whoever will say, You fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. If therefore you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there before the altar, and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Agree with your adversary quickly, while you are with him in the way, lest perhaps the prosecutor deliver you to the judge, and the judge to the officer, and you be cast into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out of there until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But I tell you that everyone who looks at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. And if your right eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and throw it away from you. Translator note, this is hyperbole or idiom meaning to stop doing a sin. End of note, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish, than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off, and throw it away from you. Translator note. This is hyperbole or idiom meaning to stop doing a sin. End of note, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members should perish, than for your whole body to be cast into hell. And it was said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce, but I tell you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the cause of sexual immorality, makes her an adulteress, and whoever marries her when she is divorced commits adultery. Again you have heard that it was said to them of old time, do not make false vows, but fulfill your vows to the Lord. But I tell you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is the throne of God, nor by the earth, for it is the footstool of his feet, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Neither should you swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. But let your yes be yes and your no be no. Whatever is more than these is of the evil one. You have heard that it was said, 
an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not set yourself against the one who is evil. But whoever strikes you on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone sues you to take away your shirt, let him have your coat also. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. Give to him who asks you, and do not turn away him who desires to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor, and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies, and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what a reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you only greet your brothers, what more do you do than others? Do not even the non-Jews do the same? You therefore are to be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Chapter 6 Be careful that you do not do your righteousness before people, to be seen by them, or else you have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Therefore when you practice charitable giving, do not sound a trumpet before yourself, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may get glory from people. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you practice charitable giving, do not let your left hand know what your right hand does, so that your charitable giving may be in secret, then your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you are not to be as the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But you, when you pray, enter into your inner chamber, and having shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And in praying, do not use vain repetitions, as the unbelievers do, for they think that they will be heard for their much speaking. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows what things you need, before you ask Him. Therefore, you should pray this way, Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive people their wrongdoing, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive people, neither will your Father forgive your wrongdoing. Moreover when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites, with sad faces. For they disfigure their faces, that they may be seen by people to be fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, and wash your face, so that you are not seen by people to be fasting, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not lay up treasures for yourselves on the earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consume, and where thieves do not break through and steal, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The lamp of the body is the eye, if therefore your eye is sound, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and Mammon. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothing? See the birds of the sky, that they do not sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, and your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of much more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to his height? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They do not toil, neither do they spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon in all his glory was not dressed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today exists, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, won't he much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What will we eat? What will we drink? Or, with what will we be clothed? For the unbelievers seek after all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Chapter 7. Do not judge, so that you won't be judged. 
for with whatever judgment you judge, you will be judged, and with whatever measure you measure, it will be measured to you. And why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how will you tell your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first remove the log out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give that which is holy to the dogs, neither throw your pearls before the pigs, or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. To him who knocks it will be opened. Or who is there among you, who, if his son will ask him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he will ask for a fish, who will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Therefore whatever you desire for people to do to you, so also you should do to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many are those who enter in by it. How narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way that leads to life. Few are those who find it. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravening wolves. By their fruits you will know them. Do you gather grapes from thorns, or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree produces good fruit, but the corrupt tree produces evil fruit. A good tree cannot produce evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not grow good fruit is cut down, and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will tell me in that day, Lord, Lord, did not we prophesy in your name, in your name cast out demons, and in your name do many mighty works? And then I will tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Everyone therefore who hears these words of mine, and does them, will be compared to a wise man, who built his house on a rock. And the rain came down. The floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine, and does not do them will be like a foolish man, who built his house on the sand. And the rain came down, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell and great was its fall. And it happened, when Jesus had finished saying these things, that the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them with authority and not like their scribes. Chapter 8 And when he came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. And look, a leper came to him and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you want to, you can make me clean. And he stretched out his hand, and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, See that you tell nobody, but go, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded, as a testimony to them. And when he came into Capernaum, a centurion came to him, asking him, and saying, Lord, my servant lies in the house paralyzed, grievously tormented. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered, Lord, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man under authority, having under myself soldiers. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and tell another, come, and he comes, and tell my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he was amazed, and said to those who followed, truly I tell you, I have not found so great a faith with anyone in Israel. And I tell you that many will come from the east and the west, and will sit down with Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, but the children of the kingdom will be thrown out into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way. Let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed in that hour. And when Jesus came into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her. She got up and served him. And when evening came, they brought to him many possessed with demons. He cast out the spirits with a word, and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, he took our infirmities, and bore our diseases. Now when Jesus saw large crowds around him, he gave the order to depart to the other side.
Then a scribe came, and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And another of the disciples said to him, Lord, allow me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Follow me, and leave the dead to bury their own dead. And when he got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And look, a violent storm came up on the sea, so much that the boat was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. They came to him, and woke him up, saying, Save us, Lord. We are dying. And he said to them, Why are you fearful? O oh, you of little faith! Then he got up, rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the people were amazed, saying, What kind of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And when he came to the other side, into the country of the Gadarenes, two people possessed by demons met him there, coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, so that nobody could pass that way. And look, they shouted, saying, What do we have to do with you? Son of God, have you come here to torment us before the time? Now there was a herd of many pigs feeding far away from them. And the demons begged him, saying, If you cast us out, permit us to go away into the herd of pigs. And he said to them, Go. And they came out, and went into the pigs, and look, the whole herd rushed down the cliff into the sea, and died in the water. And those who fed them fled, and went away into the city, and told everything including what happened to those who were possessed with demons. And look, all the city came out to meet Jesus. And when they saw him, they pleaded with him to leave their region. Chapter 9 And he entered into a boat, and crossed over, and came into his own city. And look, they brought to him a man who was paralyzed, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, cheer up! Your sins are forgiven. And look, some of the scribes said to themselves, this man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier, to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Get up, and take up your, and go up to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the crowd saw it, they were afraid and glorified God who had given such authority to men. And as Jesus passed by from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax collection office. He said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And it happened as he sat in the house, Look, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When he heard it, he said to them, Those who are healthy have no need for a physician but those who are sick do. But you go and learn what this means, I desire mercy, and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Then John's disciples came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn, as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast and no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch would tear away from the garment, and a worse hole is made. Neither do people put new wine into old wineskins, or else the skins would burst, and the wine be spilled, and the skins ruined. No, they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. While he told these things to them, look, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him, as did his disciples. And look, a woman who had an issue of blood for twelve years came behind him, and touched the fringe of his garment, for she said within herself, If I just touch his garment, I will be made well. But Jesus, turning around and seeing her, said, Daughter, cheer up. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. And when Jesus came into the ruler's house, and saw the flute players, and the crowd in noisy disorder, he said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd was put out, he entered in, took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went out into all that land. And as Jesus passed by from there, two blind men followed him, calling out and saying, Have mercy on us, son of David. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, 
Do you believe that I am able to do this? They told him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus strictly commanded them, saying, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread abroad his fame in all that land. And as they went out, look, a mute man who was demon possessed was brought to him. And when the demon was cast out, the mute man spoke. And the crowds were amazed, saying, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the prince of the demons, he casts out demons. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every sickness. But when he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were harassed and scattered, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest indeed is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray therefore that the Lord of the harvest will send out laborers into his harvest. Chapter 10 And he called to himself his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to heal every disease and every sickness. Now the names of the twelve apostles are these. The first, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, and James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector. James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. Jesus sent these twelve out, and commanded them, saying, Do not go among the non-Jews, and do not enter into any city of the Samaritans. Rather, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim, saying, The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received freely give. Do not take any gold, nor silver, nor bronze in your money belts. Take no bag for your journey, neither two coats, nor shoes, nor staff, for the laborer is worthy of his food. And into whatever city or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy, and stay there until you go on. And as you enter into the household, greet it. And if the household is worthy, let your peace come on it, but if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever does not receive you, nor hear your words, as you leave that house or that city, shake off the dust from your feet. Truly I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Look, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore be wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. But beware of people, for they will deliver you up to councils, and in their synagogues they will scourge you. Yes and you will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them and to the nations. But when they deliver you over, do not be anxious how or what you will say, for it will be given you in that hour what you will say. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. And brother will deliver up brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents, and cause them to be put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. But when they persecute you in one city, flee to the other. And if they persecute you in the other, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be like his teacher, and the servant like his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more those of his household. Therefore do not be afraid of them for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light, and what you hear whispered in the ear, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. Rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for an Assyrian coin? Not one of them falls on the ground apart from your father's will, but the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Therefore do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone therefore who confesses me before people, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before people, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to send peace on the earth. I did not come to send peace, but a sword. For I came to set a man at odds against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a person's foes will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. 
And whoever does not take his cross and follow after me, is not worthy of me. Whoever seeks his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. The one who receives a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones just a cup of cold water to drink because he is a disciple, truly I tell you he will in no way lose his reward. Chapter 11 And it happened that when Jesus had finished directing his twelve disciples, he departed from there to teach and proclaim in their cities. Now when John heard in the prison the works of the Messiah, he sent, a message, by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or should we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John the things which you hear and see, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended by me. And as these went their way, Jesus began to say to the crowds concerning John, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man in soft clothing? Look, those who wear soft things are in king's houses. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and much more than a prophet. This is the one of whom it is written, Look, I send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those who are born of women there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist, yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to receive it, this is Elijah, who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what should I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces, who call to their companions and say, We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed in mourning, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a gluttonous man and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners but wisdom is justified by her actions. Then he began to denounce the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done, because they did not repent. What to you, Chorazin? What to you, Bethsaida? For if the mighty works had been done in Tyre and Sidon which were done in you, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, you will be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works had been done in Sodom which were done in you, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom, on the day of judgment, than for you. At that time, Jesus answered, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you hid these things from the wise and intelligent, and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for so it was well pleasing in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, neither does anyone know the Father, except the Son, and he to whom the Son desires to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Chapter 12 At that time, Jesus went on the Sabbath day through the grain fields. His disciples were hungry and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But the Pharisees, when they saw it, said to him, Look, your disciples do what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. But he said to them, Have you not read what David did, when he and his companions were hungry, how he entered into the house of God, and they ate the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law? that on the Sabbath day the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. But if you had known what this means, I desire mercy, and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. And he departed from there and went into their synagogue. And look, there was a man with a withered hand. They asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? That they might accuse him. And he said to them, what man is there among you, who is one sheep, and if this one falls into a pit on the Sabbath day, 
won't he grab onto it, and lift it out? Of how much more value then is a person than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he told the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and it was restored whole, just like the other. But the Pharisees went out, and conspired against him, how they might destroy him. But Jesus, perceiving that, withdrew from there. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them all, and commanded them that they should not make him known. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through Isaiah the prophet, saying, Look, my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit on him, and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel, nor shout, nor will anyone hear his voice in the streets. He won't break a bruised reed. And he won't put out a smoldering wick, until he leads justice to victory. And in his name the coastlands will hope. Then one possessed by a demon, blind and mute, was brought to him and he healed him, so that the mute man spoke and saw. And all the crowds were amazed, and said, Can this be the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This man does not cast out demons, except by Beelzebul, the prince of the demons. And knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. And if Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? If I by Beelzebul cast out demons, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if I by the Spirit of God cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter into the house of the strong man? and carry off his possessions, unless he first bind the strong man. And then he will plunder his house. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me, scatters. Therefore I tell you, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven people, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. And whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him, but whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him, neither in this age, nor in that which is to come. Either make the tree good, and its fruit good, or make the tree corrupt, and its fruit corrupt, for the tree is known by its fruit. You offspring of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings out good things, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings out evil things. But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, but no sign will be given it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The people of Nineveh will stand up in the judgment with this generation, and will condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and look, something greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise up in the judgment with this generation, and will condemn it, for she came from a distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and look, someone greater than Solomon is here. But the unclean spirit, when he is gone out of the person, passes through waterless places, seeking rest, and does not find it. Then he says, I will return into my house from which I came out, and when he has come back, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes, and takes with himself seven other spirits more evil than he is, and they enter in and dwell there. The last state of that man becomes worse than the first. Even so will it be also to this evil generation. While he was yet speaking to the crowds, look, his mother and his brothers stood outside, seeking to speak to him. Then one said to him, Look. Your mother and your brothers stand outside, seeking to speak to you. But he answered him who spoke to him, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand towards his disciples, and said, Look, my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father who is in heaven, he is my brother, and sister, and mother. Chapter 13 On that day Jesus went out of the house, and sat by the seaside. And large crowds gathered to him, so that he entered into a boat, and sat, and all the crowd stood on the beach. And he spoke to them many things in parables, saying, Look, a farmer went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell by the roadside, and the birds came and devoured them. And others fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, 
and immediately they sprang up, because they had no depth of earth, but when the sun had risen, they were scorched. Because they had no root, they withered away. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Still others fell on good soil, and yielded fruit, some one hundred times as much, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Then the disciples came, and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And answering, he said to them, To you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but it is not given to them. For whoever has, to him will be given, and he will have abundance, but whoever does not have, from him will be taken away even that which he has. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing, they do not hear, neither do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, In hearing you will hear, but will not understand, and seeing you will see, but not perceive. For the heart of this people has grown dull, and their ears are sluggish in hearing, and they have closed their eyes, otherwise they might see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn back, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For truly I tell you that many prophets and righteous people desired to see the things which you see, and did not see them, and to hear the things which you hear, and did not hear them. Hear, then, the parable of the farmer. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and does not understand it, the evil one comes, and snatches away that which has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown by the roadside. And what was sown on the rocky places, this is he who hears the word, and immediately with joy receives it. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while. When oppression or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. And what was sown among the thorns, this is he who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. And what was sown on the good ground, this is he who hears the word, and understands it, who truly bears fruit, and brings forth, some one hundred times as much, some sixty, and some thirty. He said another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field, but while everyone slept, his enemy came and sowed tares also among the wheat, and went away, but when the blade sprang up and brought forth fruit, then the tares appeared also. So the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where did these tares come from? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. And the servants asked him, then do you want us to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest perhaps while you gather up the tares, you root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the harvest time I will tell the reapers, First, gather up the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. He said another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took, and sowed in his field, which indeed is smaller than all seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in its branches. He spoke another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took, and hid in three measures of meal, until it was all leavened. Jesus spoke all these things in parables to the crowds, and without a parable, he did not speak to them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the beginning of the world. Then Jesus sent the crowds away, and went into the house. His disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares in the field. And he answered them, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man, and the field is the world, and the good seed, these are the children of the kingdom, and the tares are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. As therefore the tares are gathered up and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that cause stumbling, and those who do iniquity, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found, and hid. In his joy. He goes and sells all that he has, and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is a merchant seeking fine pearls, and having found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet, that was cast into the sea, 
and gathered some fish of every kind, which, when it was filled, they drew up on the beach. They sat down, and gathered the good into containers, but the bad they threw away. So will it be in the end of the world. The angels will come forth, and separate the wicked from among the righteous, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be the weeping and the gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They answered him, Yes, Lord. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been made a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a man who is a householder, who brings out of his treasure new and old things. And it happened that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed from there. And coming into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished, and said, Where did this man get this wisdom, and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary, and his brothers, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all of his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all of these things? And they were offended by him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, and in his own house. And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Chapter 14 At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard the report concerning Jesus, and said to his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. That is why these powers work in him. For Herod had arrested John, and bound him, and put him in prison for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her. And though he wanted to kill him, he feared the crowd because they regarded him as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced among them and pleased Herod. Whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatever she should ask. And she, being prompted by her mother, said, Give me here on a platter the head of John the Baptist. And the king was grieved, but for the sake of his oaths, and of those who sat at the table with him, he commanded it to be given, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought on a platter, and given to the young woman, and she brought it to her mother. Then his disciples came, and took the dead body, and buried him, and they went and told Jesus. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat, to a secluded place to be alone. When the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And he went out, and he saw a large crowd, and he had compassion on them, and healed their sick. Now when evening had come, the disciples came to him, saying, This place is desolate, and the hour is already late. Send the crowds away, that they may go into the villages, and buy themselves food. But he said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they told him, we only have here five loaves and two fish. So he said, Bring them here to me. Then he commanded the crowds to sit down on the grass, and he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed, broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the crowds. And they all ate and were filled, and they took up twelve baskets full of that which remained left over from the broken pieces. Now those who ate were about five thousand men besides women and children. And immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and to go ahead of him to the other side, while he sent the crowds away. And after he had sent the crowds away, he went up into the mountain by himself to pray. When evening had come, he was there alone. But the boat was now hundreds of yards from the land, distressed by the waves, for the wind was against it. And in the watch between three and six in the morning, he came to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It's a ghost. And they screamed with fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying Cheer up. It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the waters. He said, Come. Peter stepped down from the boat, and walked on the water and went toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he yelled, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus stretched out his hand, took hold of him, and said to him, You have little faith, why did you doubt? When they got up into the boat, the wind ceased. Those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, You are truly the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. When the people of that place recognized him, they sent into all that surrounding region, and brought to him all who were sick, and they begged him that they might just touch the fringe of his garment. And all who touched it were healed. Chapter 15. Then the Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem, saying, Why do your disciples disobey the tradition of the elders? 
for they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered them, Why do you also disobey the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and your mother, and, he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever may tell his father or his mother, whatever help you might otherwise have gotten from me is a gift devoted to God, he is not to honor his father or his mother. You have made the word of God void because of your tradition, you hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain do they worship me, teaching instructions that are the commandments of humans. He summoned the crowd, and said to them, Hear, and understand. That which enters into the mouth does not defile the man, but that which proceeds out of the mouth, this defiles the man. Then the disciples came, and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended, when they heard this saying? But he answered, Every plant which my heavenly Father did not plant will be uprooted. Leave them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. If the blind guide the blind, both will fall into a pit. And answering, Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. So he said, Do you also still not understand? Do you not understand that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the belly, and then out of the body? But the things which proceed out of the mouth come out of the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart come forth evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, sexual sins, thefts, false testimony, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile the man, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile the man. Jesus went out from there, and withdrew into the region of Tyre and Sidon. And look, a Canaanite woman came out from those borders, and started shouting, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demonized but he did not answer her a word. His disciples came and pleaded with him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. But he answered, I was not sent to anyone but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered, It is not appropriate to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Be it done to you even as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that hour. Jesus departed there, and came near to the Sea of Galilee, and he went up into the mountain, and sat there. Large crowds came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, crippled, and many others, and they put them down at his feet, and he healed them. So the crowd was amazed when they saw the mute speaking, injured whole, lame walking and blind seeing and they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, I have compassion on the crowd, because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away fasting, or they might faint on the way. Then the disciples said to him, Where should we get so many loaves in a deserted place as to satisfy so great a crowd? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. He commanded the crowd to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish. He gave thanks and broke them, and gave to the disciples, and the disciples to the crowds. They all ate, and were filled. They took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces that were left over. Those who ate were four thousand men, besides women and children. Then he sent away the crowds, got into the boat, and came into the borders of Magadan. Chapter 16 the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, asked him to show them a sign from heaven. But he answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. In the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. Hypocrites! You know how to discern the appearance of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there will be no sign given to it except the sign of Jonah. He left them, and departed. The disciples came to the other side and had forgotten to take bread. Jesus said to them, Watch out and guard yourselves against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They reasoned among themselves, saying, We brought no bread. But Jesus, becoming aware of this, said, You have little faith, why are you discussing among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Do you not remember the five loaves for the five thousand? and how many baskets you took up. Nor the seven loaves for the four thousand, and how many baskets you took up. 
Why is it that you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread? But beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the yeast of bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now when Jesus came into the parts of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They said, Some say John the Baptist, some, Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. I also tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded the disciples that they should tell no one that he is the Messiah. From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed, and the third day be raised up. Peter took him aside, and began to rebuke him, saying, Far be it from you, Lord! This will never be done to you. But he turned, and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan! You are a stumbling block to me, for you are not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a person, if he gains the whole world, and forfeits his life? Or what will a person give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will render to everyone according to his deeds. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will in no way taste of death, until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Chapter 17 After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John his brother, and brought them up into a high mountain by themselves. He was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as the light. And look, Moses and Elijah appeared to them talking with him. Peter answered and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you want, let us make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, look, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And look, a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces, and were very afraid. Jesus came and touched them and said, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus commanded them, saying, Do not tell anyone what you saw, until the Son of Man has risen from the dead. The disciples asked him, saying, Then why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he answered and said, Elijah indeed comes, and will restore all things, but I tell you that Elijah has come already and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted to. Even so the Son of Man will also suffer by them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. And when they came to the crowd, a man came to him, knelt before him, and said, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic, and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire, and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Jesus answered, Faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I bear with you? Bring him here to me. Jesus rebuked him, the demon went out of him, and the boy was cured from that hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately, and said, Why weren't we able to cast it out? So he said to them, Because of your little faith. For truly I tell you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you will tell this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. While they were gathering together in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be delivered up into the hands of men, and they will kill him, and the third day he will be raised up. They were exceedingly sorry. When they had come to Capernaum, those who collected the didrachma coins came to Peter, and said, Does not your teacher pay the didrachma? He said, Yes. When he came into the house, Jesus anticipated him, saying, What do you think? 
Simon, from whom do the kings of the earth receive toll or tribute? From their children, or from strangers? And when he said, From strangers. Jesus said to him, Therefore the children are exempt. But, lest we cause them to stumble, go to the sea, cast a hook, and take up the first fish that comes up. When you have opened its mouth, you will find a stater coin. Take that, and give it to them for me and you. Chapter 18 In that hour the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a little child to himself, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Truly I tell you, unless you turn, and become as little children, you will in no way enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whoever therefore humbles himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such little child in my name receives me, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him that a huge millstone should be hung around his neck, and that he should be sunk in the depths of the sea. What are the world because of stumbling blocks? For there will always be something to cause people to stumble, but woe to the person through whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off, and cast it from you. Translator note, this is hyperbole or idiom meaning to stop doing a sin. End of note, it is better for you to enter into life crippled or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into the everlasting fire. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out, and cast it from you. Translator note, this is hyperbole or idiom meaning to stop doing a sin. End of note, it is better for you to enter into life with one eye, rather than having two eyes to be cast into the fire of hell. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If someone has 100 sheep, and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the 99, go to the mountains, and seek that which has gone astray? If he finds it, Truly I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine which have not gone astray. Even so it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go, show him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained back your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two more with you, that at the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If he refuses to hear the church also, let him be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they will ask, it will be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord. How often can my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Up to seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not tell you up to seven times, but up to seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king, who wanted to reconcile accounts with his servants. When he had begun to reconcile, one was brought to him who owed him ten thousand talents. But because he could not pay, his lord commanded him to be sold, with his wife, his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and kneeled before him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will repay you all. The Lord of that servant, being moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. But that servant went out, and found one of his fellow servants, who owed him one hundred denarii, and he grabbed him, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you all. He would not, but went and cast him into prison, until he should pay back that which was due. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were exceedingly sorry, and came and told to their lord all that was done. Then his lord called him in, and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt, because you begged me. Should you not also have had mercy on your fellow servant, even as I had mercy on you? His lord was angry, and delivered him to the tormentors, until he should pay all that was due. So my heavenly Father will also do to you, if you do not each forgive your brother as trespasses from your heart. Chapter 19 It happened when Jesus had finished these words, he departed from Galilee, and came into the borders of Judea beyond the Jordan. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. And Pharisees came to him, testing him, and saying to him, Is it lawful for a man to divorce a wife for any reason? 
He answered, and said, Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother, and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh? So that they are no more two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no one separate. They asked him, Why then did Moses command us to give her a certificate of divorce, and divorce her? He said to them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, allowed you to divorce your wives, but from the beginning it has not been so. I tell you that whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, commits adultery. And he who marries her when she is divorced commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If this is the case of a husband with a wife, it is not expedient to marry. But he said to them, Not everyone can receive this saying, but those to whom it is given. For there are eunuchs who are born that way from their mother's womb, and there are eunuchs who are made eunuchs by men, and there are eunuchs who made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He who is able to receive it, let him receive it. Then little children were brought to him, that he should lay his hands on them and pray, and the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Allow the little children, and do not forbid them to come to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to ones like these. He placed his hands on them, and departed from there. And look, someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing must I do, that I may have everlasting life? He said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? No one is good but one. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which ones? And Jesus said, Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not offer false testimony. Honor your father and mother. And, love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, All these things I have kept. What do I still lack? Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. But when the young man heard the saying, he went away sad, for he was one who had great possessions. Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, it is difficult for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye, than for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? Looking at them, Jesus said, With humans this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter answered, Look, we have left everything, and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you that you who have followed me, in the regeneration when the Son of Man will sit on the throne of his glory, you also will sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, will receive one hundred times, and will inherit everlasting life. But many will be last who are first, and first who are last. Chapter 20 for the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. When he had agreed with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. He went out about nine in the morning, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. To them he said, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went their way. Again he went out about noon and at three in the afternoon, and did likewise. About five that afternoon he went out, and found others standing. He said to them, Why do you stand here all day idle? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening had come, the lord of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning from the last to the first. When those who were hired at about five in the afternoon came, they each received a denarius. When the first came, they supposed that they would receive more and they likewise each received a denarius. When they received it, they murmured against the master of the household, saying, These last have spent one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he answered one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take that which is yours, and go your way. It is my desire to give to this last just as much as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I want to with what I own? or is your eye evil, because I am good? So the last will be first, and the first last, for many are called, but few are chosen. As Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the twelve aside, and on the way he said to them, Look, we are going up to Jerusalem, 
and the Son of Man will be delivered to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death, and will hand him over to the non-Jews to mock, to scourge, and to crucify, and the third day he will be raised up. Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee came to him with her sons, kneeling and asking a certain thing of him. He said to her, What do you want? She said to him, Command that these, my two sons, may sit, one on your right hand, and one on your left hand, in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, We are able. He said to them, You will indeed drink my cup, but to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it is for whom it has been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard it, they were indignant with the two brothers. But Jesus summoned them, and said, You know that the rulers of the nations lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. It will not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you must be your slave, even as the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. As they went out from Jericho, a large crowd followed him. And look, two blind men sitting by the road, when they heard that Jesus was passing by, shouted, Have mercy on us, Lord, Son of David. The crowd rebuked them telling them that they should be quiet, but they shouted even more, Have mercy on us, Lord, Son of David. Jesus stood still, and called them, and asked, What do you want me to do for you? They told him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. Jesus, being moved with compassion, touched their eyes, and immediately their eyes received their sight, and they followed him. Chapter 21 When they drew near to Jerusalem, and came to Bethphage, to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village that is opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied, and a colt with her. Untie them, and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you are to say, Because the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place that it might be fulfilled which was spoken through the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Look, your king comes to you, humble, and riding on a donkey, on a colt the foal of a donkey. The disciples went, and did just as Jesus directed them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and placed their clothes on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others cut branches from the trees, and spread them on the road. The crowds who went before him, and who followed kept shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was stirred up saying, Who is this? The crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus, from Nazareth of Galilee. Jesus entered into the temple, and drove out all of those who sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the money changers' tables and the seats of those who sold the doves. He said to them, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying out in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant, and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes. Did you never read, Out of the mouth of children and infants you have prepared praise? He left them, and went out of the city to Bethany, and lodged there. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it, and found nothing on it but leaves. He said to it, let there be no fruit from you forever. Immediately the fig tree withered away. When the disciples saw it, they were amazed, saying, How did the fig tree immediately wither away? Jesus answered them, Truly I tell you, if you have faith, and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you told this mountain, Be taken up and cast into the sea, it would be done. All things, whatever you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. When he had come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching, and said, By what authority do you do these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, which if you tell me, I likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, where was it from? From heaven or from people? They reasoned with themselves, saying, If we say, from heaven, he will ask us. Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, from people, we fear the crowd, for all hold John as a prophet. 
They answered Jesus, and said, We do not know. He also said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first, and said, Son, go work today in the vineyard. He answered, I will not, but afterward he changed his mind, and went. And he came to the other, and said the same thing. And he answered and said, I go, sir, but he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said, The first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering into the kingdom of God before you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. When you saw it, you did not even repent afterward, that you might believe him. Here another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, set a hedge about it, dug a wine press in it, built a tower, leased it out to tenant farmers, and went on a journey. When the season for the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants, to receive his fruit. The tenants took his servants, beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they treated them the same way. But afterward he sent to them his son, saying, They will respect my son. But the tenants, when they saw the son, said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and have his inheritance. So they took him, and threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. When therefore the Lord of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They told him, He will utterly destroy those evil men, and will lease out the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the fruit in its season. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected, the same was made the head of the corner? This was from the Lord. It is marvelous in our eyes? Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and will be given to a nation bringing forth its fruit. He who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, but on whomever it will fall, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he spoke about them. When they sought to seize him, they feared the crowds, because they considered him to be a prophet. Chapter 22 Jesus answered and spoke again in parables to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king, who made a marriage feast for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the marriage feast, but they would not come. Again he sent out other servants, saying, Tell those who were invited, Look, I have made ready my dinner. My cattle and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the marriage feast. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his own farm, another to his merchandise, and the rest grabbed his servants, and treated them shamefully, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his armies, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but those who were invited weren't worthy. Go therefore to the intersections of the highways, and as many as you may find, invite to the marriage feast. And those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was filled with those reclining. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man who did not have on wedding clothing. And he said to him, Friend, how did you come in here not wearing wedding clothing? He was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, there is where the weeping and grinding of teeth will be. For many are called, but few chosen. Then the Pharisees went and took counsel how they might entrap him in his talk. They sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are honest, and teach the way of God in truth no matter whom you teach, for you are not partial to anyone. Tell us therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness, and said, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. They brought to him a denarius. He asked them, Whose is this image and inscription? They said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they were astonished, and left him, and went away. On that day Sadducees came to him, the ones saying that there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Teacher, Moses said, If a man dies, having no children, his brother is to marry his wife, and raise up offspring for his brother. Now there were with us seven brothers. The first married and died, and having no offspring, left his wife to his brother. In like manner the second also, and the third, to the seventh. 
After them all, the woman died. In the resurrection therefore, whose wife will she be of the seven? For they all had her. But Jesus answered them, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are like the angels in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken to you by God, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. But the Pharisees, when they heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, gathered themselves together. One of them, a law scholar, asked him a question, testing him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? He said to him, You are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. A second likewise is this, You are to love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, Of David. He said to them, How then does David in the Spirit call him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit on my right hand, until I make your enemies the footstool of your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? No one was able to answer him a word, neither did anyone dare ask him any more questions from that day forth. Chapter 23 Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and to his disciples, saying, Upon the seat of Moses the Pharisees and scribes sit. All which they will say unto you, Observe and do, but their works do not do, because they say, and do not do. For they bind heavy and hard to bear burdens, and lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves will not lift a finger to help them. But all their works they do to be seen by others. They make their to fill in broad and enlarge the fringe of their garments, and love the place of honor at feasts, the best seats in the synagogues, the salutations in the marketplaces, and to be called rabbi by people. But you are not to be called rabbi, for one is your teacher, and all of you are brothers. Call no man on the earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is your master, the Messiah. But he who is greatest among you will be your servant. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. What do you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you devour the houses of widows, and for show make long prayers. Therefore you will receive greater condemnation. What do you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you shut up the kingdom of heaven in front of people, for you do not enter in yourselves, neither do you allow those who are entering in to enter. What do you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you travel around by sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much of a son of hell as yourselves. What do you, you blind guides, who say, whoever swears by the temple, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, he is obligated. You blind fools, for which is greater, the gold, or the temple that sanctified the gold? Whoever swears by the altar, it is nothing, but whoever swears by the gift that is on it, he is obligated? You blind people! For which is greater, the gift, or the altar that sanctifies the gift? He therefore who swears by the altar, swears by it, and by everything on it. He who swears by the temple, swears by it, and by him who dwells in it. He who swears by heaven, swears by the throne of God, and by him who sits on it. What do you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you tithe mend, dill, and cumin, and have left undone the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. But you ought to have done these, and not to have left the other undone. You blind guides, who strain out a gnat, and swallow a camel. What do you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but within they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate so that the outside may become clean also. What do you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you are like whitened tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful, but inwardly are full of dead people's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous to people, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. What do you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites? For you build the tombs of the prophets, and decorate the tombs of the righteous, and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. 
Therefore you testified to yourselves that you were children of those who killed the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of your fathers, you serpents, you offspring of vipers, how will you escape the judgment of hell? Therefore, look, I send to you prophets, wise people, and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify, and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues, and persecute from city to city, that on you may come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah son of Berechiah, whom you killed between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly I tell you, all these things will come upon this generation, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets, and stones those who are sent to her. How often I would have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me from now on, until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Chapter 24 Jesus went out from the temple, and was going on his way. His disciples came to him to show him the buildings of the temple. But answering, he said to them, Do you not see all of these things? Truly I tell you, there will not be left here one stone on another, that will not be thrown down. As he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, Be careful that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and will lead many astray. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for this must happen, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and plagues and earthquakes in various places, but all these things are the beginning of birth pains. Then they will deliver you up to oppression, and will kill you. You will be hated by all of the nations for my name's sake. Then many will stumble, and will deliver up one another, and will hate one another. Many false prophets will arise, and will lead many astray. And because lawlessness is multiplied, the love of many will grow cold, but he who endures to the end, the same will be saved. This good news of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world for a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. When, therefore, you see the abomination of desolation, which was spoken of through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take out things that are in his house. Let him who is in the field not return back to take his coat. But woe to those who are with child and to nursing mothers in those days. Pray that your flight will not be in the winter, nor on a Sabbath, for then there will be great oppression, such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now, no, nor ever will be. Unless those days had been shortened, no flesh would have been saved. But for the sake of the chosen ones, those days will be shortened. Then if anyone tells you, look, here is the Messiah, or, there, do not believe it. For there will arise false messiahs, and false prophets, and they will show great signs and wonders, so as to lead astray, if possible, even the chosen ones. See, I have told you beforehand. If therefore they tell you, look, he is in the wilderness, do not go out, look, he is in the inner chambers, do not believe it. For as the lightning flashes from the east, and is seen even to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever the carcass is, there is where the vultures gather together. But immediately after the oppression of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken, and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather together his chosen ones from the four winds, from one end of the sky to the other. Now from the fig tree learn this parable. When its branch has now become tender, and puts forth its leaves, you know that the summer is near. Even so you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away, until all these things are accomplished. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But no one knows of that day and hour, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but my Father only. As the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days which were before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the box-shaped vessel, and they did not know until the flood came and took them all away, 
so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left, two women grinding at the mill, one will be taken and one will be left. Watch therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord comes. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what watch of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched, and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore also be ready, for in an hour that you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord has set over his household, to give them their food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord finds doing so when he comes. Truly I tell you that he will set him over all that he has. But if that evil servant should say in his heart, My Lord is delayed, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and eat and drink with the drunkards, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he does not expect it, and in an hour when he does not know it, and will cut him in pieces, and appoint his portion with the hypocrites. There is where the weeping and grinding of teeth will be. Chapter 25 Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins, who took their lamps, and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For the foolish, when they took their lamps, took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Now while the bridegroom delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Look, the bridegroom! Come out to meet him! Then all those virgins arose, and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, there will not be enough for us and you. Go rather to those who sell, and buy for yourselves. While they went away to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you do not know the day nor the hour. For it is like a man, going on a journey, who called his own servants, and entrusted his goods to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his own ability. Then he went on his journey. Immediately the one who received the five talents went and traded with them, and made another five talents. In like manner he who got the two gained another two, but he who received the one went away and dug in the earth, and hid his lord's money. Now after a long time the lord of those servants came, and reconciled accounts with them. And he who received the five talents came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. See, I have gained another five talents. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, I will set you over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. And he also who had the two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. See, I have gained another two talents. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, I will set you over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you that you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter. I was afraid, and went away and hid your talent in the earth. See, you have what is yours. But his Lord answered him, You wicked and slothful servant. You knew that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. You ought therefore to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received back my own with interest. Take away therefore the talent from him, and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will be given, and he will have abundance, but from him who does not have, even that which he has will be taken away. Throw out the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Before him all the nations will be gathered, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then the king will tell those on his right hand, Come, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, for I was hungry, and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, and feed you, or thirsty, and give you a drink? When did we see you as a stranger, and take you in, or naked, 
and clothe you? When did we see you sick, or in prison, and come to you? The king will answer them, Truly I tell you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say also to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire which is prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was hungry, and you did not give me food to eat, I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink, I was a stranger, and you did not take me in, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will also answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not help you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly I tell you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. These will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into everlasting life. Chapter 26 And it happened, when Jesus had finished all these words, that he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people gathered together in the court of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas. They took counsel together that they might take Jesus by deceit, and kill him, but they said, Not during the feast, lest a riot occur among the people. Now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster jar of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw this, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much, and given to the poor. However, knowing this, Jesus said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? Because she has done a good work for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. For in pouring this ointment on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. Truly I tell you, wherever this good news is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken of as a memorial of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests, and said, What are you willing to give me, that I should deliver him to you? They weighed out for him thirty pieces of silver. From that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain person, and tell him, The teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus commanded them, and they prepared the Passover. Now when evening had come, he was reclining at the table with the twelve. As they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you that one of you will betray me. And they were greatly distressed and each one began to ask him, It is not me, is it, Lord? He answered, He who dipped his hand with me in the dish, the same will betray me. The Son of Man goes, even as it is written of him, but woe to that man through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, answered, It is not me, is it, Rabbi? He said to him, You said it. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks for it and broke it. He gave to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took a cup, gave thanks, and gave to them, saying, All of you drink it, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you that I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on, until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, all of you will be made to stumble because of me tonight, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter answered him, Even if all will be made to stumble because of you, I will never be made to stumble. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you that tonight, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. All of the disciples also said likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and said to his disciples, Sit here, while I go there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and severely troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here, and watch with me. He went forward a little, fell on his face, and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible let this cup pass away from me, nevertheless, not what I desire, but what you desire. 
he came to the disciples, and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, What, could you not watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray, that you do not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time he went away, and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your desire be done. He came again and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. He left them again, went away, and prayed a third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples, and said to them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Look, the hour is near, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Arise, let us be going. Look, he who betrays me is near. While he was still speaking, look, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he who betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whoever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him. Immediately he came to Jesus, and said, Hail, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, why are you here? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus, and took him. And look, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand, and drew his sword, and struck the servant of the high priest, and struck off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all those who take the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I could not ask my father, and he would even now send me more than twelve legions of angels? How then would the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be so? In that hour Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? I sat daily in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has happened, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him, and fled. Those who had taken Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were gathered together. But Peter followed him from a distance, to the court of the high priest, and entered in and sat with the officers, to see the end. Now the chief priests and the whole council sought false testimony against Jesus so they could put him to death, and they found none, even though many false witnesses came forward. But afterward two came forward, and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God, and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up, and said to him, Have you no answer? What is this that these testify against you? But Jesus held his peace. The high priest answered him, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said it. Nevertheless, I tell you, after this you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power, and coming on the clouds of the sky. Then the high priest tore his clothing, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? See, now you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, He is worthy of death. Then they spit in his face and beat him with their fists, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah! Who hit you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him, saying, You were also with Jesus, the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. And when he had gone out onto the porch, another girl saw him, and said to those who were there, This man also was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while those who stood by came and said to Peter, Surely you are also one of them, for your accent makes you known. Then he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. Immediately the rooster crowed. Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and wept bitterly. Chapter 27 Now when morning had come, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death, and they bound him, and led him away, and delivered him to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, who betrayed him, when he saw that Jesus was condemned, felt remorse, and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I betrayed innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? You see to it. He threw down the pieces of silver in the sanctuary, and departed. He went away and hanged himself. The chief priests took the pieces of silver, and said, It's not lawful to put them into the treasury, since it is the price of blood. They took counsel, and bought the potter's field with them, to bury strangers in. Therefore that field was called the field of blood to this day. Then that which was spoken through Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled, saying, They took the thirty pieces of silver, 
the price of him upon whom a price had been set, whom some of the sons of Israel priced, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said to him, You say so. When he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? He gave him no answer, not even one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the feast the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner, whom they desired. They had then a notable prisoner, called Barabbas. When therefore they were gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you, Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Messiah? For he knew that because of envy they had delivered him up. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, and destroy Jesus. But the governor answered them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, What then should I do with Jesus, who is called Messiah? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the louder, saying, Let him be crucified. So Pilate, seeing that nothing was being gained, but rather that a disturbance was starting, took water and he washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this righteous man. You see to it, all the people answered, May his blood be on us, and on our children. Then he released to them Barabbas, but Jesus he flogged and delivered to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium, and gathered the whole garrison together against him. They stripped him, and put a scarlet robe on him. They braided a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and a reed in his right hand, and they kneeled down before him, and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him, and took the reed and struck him on the head. When they had mocked him, they took the robe off of him, and put his clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. As they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, and they compelled him to go with them, that he might carry his cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, the place of a skull. They gave him wine to drink mixed with gall. When he had tasted it, he would not drink. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothing among them, casting lots, and they sat and watched him there. They set up over his head the accusation against him written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then there were two robbers crucified with him, one on his right hand and one on the left. Those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads, and saying, You who destroy the temple, and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise the chief priests also mocking, with the scribes, and the elders, said, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The robbers also who were crucified with him insulted him in the same way. Now from noon until three in the afternoon there was darkness over all the land. Then at about three in the afternoon Jesus called out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lemma shabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of them who stood there, when they heard it, said, This man is calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran, and took a sponge, and filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave him a drink. The rest said, Let him be. Let us see whether Elijah comes to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, and yielded up his spirit. And look, the veil of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split. The tombs were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they entered into the holy city and appeared to many. Now the centurion, and those who were with him watching Jesus, when they saw the earthquake, and the things that were done, feared exceedingly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from afar, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, serving him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Josie, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When evening had come, a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who himself was also Jesus' disciple came. This man went to Pilate, and asked for the body of Jesus. 
Then Pilate commanded that it be released. Joseph took the body, and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb, which he had cut out in the rock, and he rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb, and departed. Mary Magdalene was there, and the other Mary, sitting opposite the tomb. Now on the next day, which was the day after the preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees were gathered together to Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember what that deceiver said while he was still alive, after three days I will rise again. Command therefore that the tomb be made secure until the third day, lest perhaps his disciples come and steal him away, and tell the people, he is risen from the dead, and the last deception will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard, go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure, sealing the stone. Chapter 28 Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And look, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from the sky, and came and rolled away the stone, and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook, and became like dead men. The angel answered the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just like he said. Come, see the place where he was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and look, he goes before you into Galilee, there you will see him. See, I have told you. They departed quickly from the tomb, frightened yet with great joy, and ran to bring his disciples word. And look, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. And they came and took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers that they should go into Galilee, and there they will see me. Now while they were going, look, some of the guards came into the city, and told the chief priests all the things that had happened. When they were assembled with the elders, and had taken counsel, they gave a large amount of silver to the soldiers, saying, Say that his disciples came by night, and stole him away while we slept. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and make you free of worry. So they took the money and did as they were told. This saying was spread abroad among the Jewish people, and continues until this day. But the eleven disciples went into Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had sent them. When they saw him, they bowed down to him, but some doubted. Jesus came to them and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore go, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all things that I commanded you. And look, I am with you every day, even to the end of the age.